if any of you are like me, you probably like watching some of the old Iron Man movies. One thing I love about watching Tony Stark is he continually improves upon every single suit that he makes. So for example, a suit that you may see in episode one that has a certain problem with it, by the time you get to the next Avengers movie or you get to the next Iron Man movie, that weakness is completely gone and is now a huge strength that he uses in his suit to defeat his enemies. I guess the reason why I like that analogy so much is that I've kind of implemented that on my boat the past couple weeks. I've had a lot of different problems on my boat, not huge ones, but definitely some issues, uh, and I've pretty much eliminated every single problem that I had thanks to five or six key modifications and two companies that have been a huge part of this boat's success. So. Let's go over them. All right, now going into the first mod here, we have the rudder. Now, a lot of you have seen the rudder video I made. I did a whole video working on this build and showing how I made this. However, I wasn't fully happy with it yet. And the main two pieces that I had were, number one, the old rudder didn't match the rest of the boat. And number two, water kept filling up inside the PVC. And I fixed both those things today. The first thing I went in and did was I spray painted the whole thing black. I went and got like a top coat with, it was like a waterproof chip resistant finish. I went in and did four or five layers on the whole entire thing. So we are all blacked out now, which is really cool. Another thing we did is we went in and got some marine sealant and sealed up all the holes on the rudder where the water was seeping through. A huge shout out to betterboat.com. They actually reached out to me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, we love your videos. We'd like to work Work with you if there's a couple products on your website you think that you could get use out of let us know and we'll send them to you and immediately right as i went on the website i saw the boat sealant and i went holy crap i could use that so bad for my boat there's so many points in my boat that have you know dr holes drilled in it and i could really use some help sealing those up and they came in clutch with this stuff the nice thing is they do have a couple different colors uh to choose from on the website but i chose the clear and not only is it a sealant like a silicone silicone type sealant, but it's also a glue, which is really awesome. So now whenever I'm drilling things in on the boat, it's kind of an extra little piece of, uh, you know, uh, a piece of connection there on the boat. So that way nothing's ripping off. So what I actually went in is I went in with the sealant and I went through on the whole entire edge of the rudder on both sides. I went in and covered everything up. And then I went with a couple more coats of that, that spray and sprayed over the top. That way it's still all black. Now the spray itself will chip and I could already notice at the bottom of the pipe, I've scraped it a couple times. Um, and I can already tell the, the white PVC is showing up at the end, but it's pretty easy to just go through and spray another edge on there. So I actually went in and sealed the rest of my boat up as well. So this is the thing on the back of the boat that I mount the camera mount to for the, the GoPro so you guys can see all the cool shots. I went in and I sealed the whole entire edge up and by the screw so that the whole entire thing is now waterproof. I actually went in and I sealed up every single connection, anything that I've drilled in this boat, I went in with that sealant and connected it up. And what's really nice about that is I don't really have to worry about, you know, if it, it's a really hard rain one day or just, you know, if there's a uh, some water or if it's really bad waves, I don't have to worry about any water seeping into the boat. Because these pond prowlers, the main base of the boat is made out of foam. And if that foam gets wet and it soaks up water, that water ain't going anywhere. That sealant, it's pretty cheap. It's super easy to use, 100% worth it. Another product they had on their website that I really liked as well, I'm not trying to make this super advertisement here, but I just picked up a couple of the products that I thought would be really helpful for my boat. They're products that I probably should have had anyway. They have these foam scrubs, which are okay for plastic. So for any of you guys that have kayaks and other stuff as well, uh, basically I go in after each trip now. I had a lot of like kokanee juice and pro cure and things stuck to my boat. These did a great great job. I was really surprised at how well they went in and dug out all those stains and different things. Obviously the boat's already dirty again after like two trips, but luckily these last a while. So yeah. Another quick little mod here I added to the boat. This may not affect all of you, but for those of you that troll on a boat and use downriggers, you're going to love this one. I went in, I actually have a friend who is a welder and she went in and actually welded these pieces for the pond prowler. And basically it's just like this on the other side. And what I did is I dropped it in that slot. Well, first I spray painted it black. I dropped it in the slot, put a little bit of duct tape on each side just for some extra help and screwed them in. And these are now downrigger plates. 
before the boat bent really bad when that downrigger was screwed in and it was actually uh, molding the plastic inward which I did not like uh, so I went in and with sheet metal made these little or had a friend made these little downrigger plates here and they hold that thing awesome now so all I do is I put the downrigger on top screw it in and it's mounted and I did it on both sides here um, so I have everything covered I don't have to worry about you know downriggers bending out my boat anymore quick hack but it makes a huge difference for me especially later in the summer when I'm trolling for kokanee really deep one more quick little mod here for you guys I upgraded my kayak paddle mount here if you guys see that is the where the kayak goes I actually went in and bought I believe it's yak attack um, it was like 11 bucks which is kind of pricey but this thing is pretty cool. It's a new paddle mount for the boat. What I like about this one is it snaps in a little better and it has this lock. So I can actually go underneath and clip that in and now that paddle isn't going anywhere. I actually had the paddle unclip on me once on the other kayak paddle mount. Uh, so this one, no more worries. Like I said, folks, we're going full Tony Stark here. Everything that had a weakness to it, we're rebuilding it and making it better. All right, now for the last two mods, which in my opinion are the most important parts of this boat. So before when you guys saw this boat, I had a 36 pound thrust Endura, uh, Minn Kota Endura trolling motor on the front. And then I'd either do the rudder or the two stroke motor on the back. The two stroke motor for me was a little bit of a hassle just because I had to take the boat on and off of my car every single time. And the motor had to be in my car and it made my whole Subaru Forester smell like gasoline. So I have upgraded now. This is a 50 pound thrust Endura Max. And the reason why I picked the Max is because it has variable speeds. So the Endura, it just has kind of a clicker. So it's five speeds. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and that's it. No other speeds. But with this thing, it goes 10 all the way to 100, and you can slowly turn it and fine tune the speed. And I think for most bass guys, it's not a huge issue, but when you're trolling, the difference in, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 miles an hour can be all you need to get those kokanee from lockjaw to firing away on your rod and reels. So that is huge that variable speed it also is way more powerful than my other one uh my guess is i'm probably going to be able i'm probably going to get to go an extra two miles an hour faster with this than the other trolling motor which is going to really help on those long runs to get out places but casey i thought you were worried about your trolling motor running out early in the day because your battery didn't have enough juice left in it Fix number five. This purchase right here is hands down the biggest mod to date that I have done on my boat. And that is I have made the switch to lithium batteries. I reached out to Amped Outdoors. I wanted to work with them. They make some freaking amazing lithium batteries. And they were super nice enough to, to help hook me up with a 160 amp hour lithium battery. Now, a lot of you are going to be like, Casey, why are you using a 160 amp hour battery? That is absolutely huge. And here's why. Whether I'm trolling for kokanee, trout, perch, whatever, I'm typically trolling anywhere from 1 to 2.2 miles an hour all day long. And that can really add up after a while of trolling. And I really could tell on my lead acid battery that I have at around 12 or 1 o'clock, that battery died. It was so freaking bad. And when that battery died it was just it was horrible I was stuck way out in the middle of the lake I have had so many trips where I've had to paddle in back to shore and more of them have already happened this year than all of last year combined so I was getting really nervous with that battery it did really great for the year and a half that I had it and I'm still going to keep it in case I'm on like a huge long trip and it's something just as an extra little you know little extra piece of oomph that if I need it but for almost every single one of my trips this year, I am just going to be running this battery. And 160 amp hours, I am never going to run out of battery on the water. I can now fish all day long without an issue. I, I just have no worries anymore. Like the peace of mind that I have now, knowing that I'm not going to just randomly die on the lake by 11 o'clock, it's just incredible. I can go all day now. I can catch 10 times more fish. Another huge reason why I switched to lithium is the how light it is. I mean, folks, that's so freaking light for 160 amp hours. I believe this battery is around like 30 pounds. A lead acid 160 amp hour battery is we're talking way over 60 pounds, like probably around 70, 80 pounds. That is so much extra weight on this boat. And on this pond prowler, every pound matters. The one con about lithium batteries is that they are quite expensive, um, but you've got to put it into perspective here, right? If 
I'm using that lead acid battery a lot. I'm probably gonna get one to two years of fishing out of it. And that was a perfect example. That lead acid battery is definitely not performing like it used to, and it's about a year and a half of use. With this guy, you're gonna get 15 to 20 years estimated of incredible fishing use out of this. So if you think about it, right, when the math adds up, like this is you're saving so much money by going lithium instead of lead acid battery even though you're making a higher upfront cost so to me there's just too many advantages of using a lithium battery especially upgrading to 160 amp hour so that's why i'm doing that for this boat now Amped Outdoors is an absolute G for helping me out and making these videos for you guys uh, i will put a link down below to their website where you can go check it out I would recommend for bass guys, I would say 60 to 80 amp hours is all you're gonna need, especially if you're fishing ponds or smaller lakes. You should have no issue with that. I would say if you're trolling for kokanee a lot, that 100 amp hour is really gonna help if you don't have to make a lot of big runs you know, to, to different spots. However, if you're trolling all day long like me or you're going multiple days on the boat, Upgrading to anything above a 100 is a pretty smart move um, Unless you were to get two smaller ones You could do like a 60 and an 80 or a 60 and a 60 or something like that Which I know a lot of guys do a lot of guys run multiple batteries on their boat All right, so I have added one more thing to the boat. I actually lied on the last mod here uh, This is the truly last mod. This is a circuit breaker and basically what it is It's a marine circuit breaker and this basically protects the battery and the trolling motor and the wiring from any extra surges of, of amps basically I, I don't know a lot about this, but I know the 50 amp is what you want if you're getting a battery like this when the 12 volt electric trolling motor and basically what this would do is if the battery or something were to surge extra amps to the trolling motor this thing basically stops it and it just shuts everything off so it actually has a manual shut off if you click this that stops sending any type of surge to the trolling motor. However, it also will do it on its own. So if a surge were to go through here and it's too much and it were to keep going, it just stops right here and this little thing in here goes, uh oh, too much. And it actually will shut that out on its own and basically stop those surges from going all the way up to the trolling motor and potentially wrecking havoc on the wiring in your boat. It's like less than $15 on Amazon, so it's pretty cheap, and it's something that could potentially save your butt big time on the boat. So it's something that I would totally recommend if you guys are upgrading your batteries, or even if you have a lead acid battery, it's something I would recommend doing. It's really easy to install. I just drilled those two in here. It comes with all this other stuff. So basically I just cut my wiring on my boat and connected it with the terminals here. And then I actually tape my wires and bring the terminals up to the battery here so it's pretty easy to install it's not not that bad i apologize i'm really bad at explaining those surge protectors but i just know it's something that you have to have on your boat i know a lot of my bass fishing buddies that fish tournaments and have a lot of batteries and things on their boat say casey you've just got to do it it's time for you to upgrade so that's why i went with that better be safe than sorry all righty i think we explained every single thing on this boat if you guys have any questions or concerns leave a comment down below i think the only thing we got to do now is just go take it fishing let's do it oh. Oh man, folks, it's it's not even like it's the same boat anymore. I am so spoiled. It is gonna be an absolutely beautiful day on the water here. Oh my gosh, we're gonna get on some big fish today. I do wanna test out the top speed on this thing as well. I do have the, the, the breaker in, so I don't really have to worry about, you know, a fuse going out or something with the boat because I have that thing. Folks, I'm on half speed right now and it's going three miles an hour. That is already more than what my other trolling motor did, full blast. I know it's the battery helping too. I mean, I guarantee you that battery full charge is also why this thing is just freaking ripping right now. Folks, it's not even like it's the same boat anymore. Like it's not, it, it's, there's no way to compare this to the previous, like it's not even close. We're almost at four miles an hour. Oh yes, yes. Now, granted, it is a very nice weather day, so 
you know, I'm curious to see if the wind does pick up and we get some storms rolling in later, which I hope we do because it makes the fishing better. If those storms come and roll in, I'm curious to see how this thing will do battling some wind and some other, you know, other uh, factors, right? We want a jumbo perch today, folks. We want a two plus pound yellow perch in the boat or a three pound smallmouth. I'm totally fine with a three pound smallmouth. Drop our rudder down. That rudder immediately slows us down. However, it keeps us way more stable, which is a trade-off I'm willing to have. Uh, all right, let's put you guys up front now. How you guys doing here? You guys see me all right? See the rods? I really hope so. I kind of depend on that shot right there, so. Cool. I'm so glad you guys like this camera because I worked so freaking hard on making that thing and I was really hoping it would get some good shots and oh my gosh, it just gets the best shots ever. So I'm super pumped about that thing. Oh my gosh, we're already on, we're already on. Holy crap, that was quick. That was quick. I wouldn't even set the rods up yet. Oh my gosh. I didn't even have them set up yet. Wow, he didn't fight at all. He didn't fight at all, but damn he hit hard. My goodness, it can't be that easy today, folks. Oh my frick. There's fish number one for the day. That is not a jumbo perch. However, that still is a really nice fish. Beautiful, beautiful fish. And these things taste amazing. So we're gonna put him in the cooler. Hopefully we'll stack up a nice little pile of them today. There we are. Wow, second I went shallower. Second I switched it up and went shallower, he hammered it. Oh, that's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Crawdad colors picking them up today, folks. My goodness, that is a gorgeous, Gorgeous fish right there. Oh man. Oh, there we are. There we are. Oh my gosh. I'm putting the other one away in the cooler. That rod gets hit. Then this rod goes down. That's the area. That's the money zone right there. And that was the same spot I caught my fish earlier. So we found them. We found the, the exact area those fish are chilling at. Oh my gosh, we got, a, we got a double. Oh, no, he hit it and missed it. Never mind. Okay, this fish is in. Watch that rod, because that rod's ready to get hit. They're all pretty cookie cutter size. They're all kind of the same... Uh, same dimensions and everything. It's still a really, really good fish, but we are chasing some jumbos today. We want some big boys. Oh my. That fish hammered it. Putting the other fish in the freaking cooler. Safe to say we found the spot. Oh, that's a, that's a big one. That's a nice one, folks. God dang. I just made quick work of those puppies right there. Look at that one. That's a good one. Oh, man. Usually the fish that hit the hardest aren't always the big ones. But in that case, that was the hardest hit of the day, and it's the biggest fish. Oh. oh 
Holy crap. Oh my gosh. I was just about to turn because I thought maybe they aren't out in 15 feet, but my goodness. Ugh. All right. I'm probably going to stop at like 15 fish today and then I won't keep any more. I'll just, you know, throw, throw all the rest back. I really don't feel like cleaning like 50 something fish later. So <laughs> we're just going to do a couple. I don't know how I'm the only boat on the lake right now. It's a gorgeous morning. It's the week before Memorial Day weekend. I don't get it. I mean, I'm fine with it. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm totally fine with it. But, just weird. Oh. Oh, we got a double. We got a double. We got a double. <laughs> oh my gosh. You still on? Oh yeah, you still on. Wow, this is a good fish. Ugh. Okay. Put him there. In the same spot too. It's the exact same spot that I caught him at earlier. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's a little guy. All right, so we're gonna let this guy go. I do not feel like cleaning him today. Say goodbye. This one, however, is not going to share the same fate. Look at that. That's a good one. Frankly, I don't know why I'm not deciding to just slow down and go grab a bass rod and jig for him. I just love trolling. I just love trolling so much. And I'm still catching fish. So, that's all that matters. <laughs> that's little. Oh my gosh. All right. He's going back. Well, he's not going back now. And the cooler he goes. Oh. I don't know what that is. What the? What the heck is that? What the? I don't know what this is. Oh my God, but it's pulling really hard. Oh, it's a big old small mouth. Oh, it's a nice small mouth. Oh, this is so much more fun than the perch. <laughs> oh, stay down. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. Freaking Lou the Rod. Oh. Oh, that's a nice small mouth. Holy smokes. That's a nice small mouth. Oh. Oh my god. God, that's a nice freaking smallmouth. Holy crap. Look at the freaking size of that smallmouth. Oh my gosh. Fishing for perch 
and wham, he crushes it. That, that's got to be my, that's got to be close to my PB smallmouth right there. That fish is well over two pounds. That thing is so freaking heavy. I didn't bring a scale today, so I have no idea, but oh my gosh, folks. Comment below how heavy you guys think this fish is. Holy smokes. We're going to get him back. Oh crap, we got another fish. Okay. Release the smallmouth. Oh crap. That's a lot of weight. I don't know what this thing is. Oh, it's coming up, it's coming up. If it jumps, it's probably a smallmouth. Oh no, it's a perch, it's a perch. Oh, he's just hooked weird. Boo! Boo! We thought you were a smallmouth. Boo! This is just stupid. This is stupid fishing. If you guys enjoyed this action-packed adventure, you're also gonna love these two up here. This took me a solid hour and five minutes to film today, so I think that's my quickest fishing video I've ever made. Huge shout out to Amped Outdoors and BetterBoat.com for helping out with today's video. Their products are incredible. You guys know I only fish the best stuff and it's why I'm out here slamming fish. So hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time on Humbug Videos.